Hey everybody, what is going on? Welcome to Roto World's DFS Pick Six, presented by Roto Grinders. I'm Eric Crane, joined by one of my favorite, two of my favorites in the world. We got Rich Rebar here, Lord Reeves. What's going on, buddy? What's going on, guys? You know, uh, last week was pretty fun. You know, I had a, a ton of Alvin Kamara on Thursday, and I was just like ready to just try to make up all that money. And then actually, my Thursday lineup ended up being the best lineup I had, you know, in, in totality. So it was one of those uh, real fun weeks. And I think it's going to be a fun week this week, too, because the pricing is, is good this week. And I think there's a lot of good quarterback plays on the board. So anytime there's a lot of good quarterback plays on the board, it means we can have some high scores out here. Yeah, and I'm glad you guys had fun last week. I lit it up on Derek Carr. So my week, <laughs> not. It was not all that fun. Evan Silva, how was your week? It was good. I mean, I made plenty of mistakes, but I went pretty much all in on Robbie Gould, who has been the Stones uh, <laughs> since Gar- Garoppolo took over at quarterback. DeAndre Hopkins, who obviously was the nuts, uh, had a ton of Trey Burton, had a bunch of Steven Anderson in. And then I woke up Sunday morning and uh, – change it all to Trey Burton and that wound up being uh, super positive mm, yeah. uh, and then and then Giovanni Bernard crushed it on both sites uh, and you know even even without a touchdown and I think on FanDuel 19 on DraftKings at 5100 and 3100 respectively I mean he was a guy that you wanted in your lineup you know and uh, I, I had him in every single lineup so uh, that that was very helpful. Yeah, you know, last week, Gio was kind of just a don't-get-cute spot. You know, he's going to get all the touches. Yeah, there's a game theory argument that's supposed to be made for fading him. But in the end, man, like, you just got to play guys like that. And hopefully, we can find a few guys like that this yeah. week. You Cash know. Kaiser. Cash Kaiser was, Cash was dope last Kaiser week. Cash Kaiser got it done. I mean, Sean <laughs> Kaiser just shows up. And I'll... I faded Josh Gordon last week for the most part. I had a few shares, but I faded him. Mm-hmm. And about, oh, I don't know, 20 minutes into the slate, I was going, oh, no, this is not going to end well. This, <laughs> this is not a good thing at all. It ended up being okay. Well, aside from the whole, well, you know, Derek Carr thing. But, uh, Evan, I don't know how he didn't throw for 17 touchdowns against that cheap secondary. But here we are. Daryl Rivas. Because he's not again. good. Because he's not good. That's an issue. <laughs> Hopefully it'll be this week because I'm going to be loading up on Phillip Rivers again on that Thursday, Saturday slate, but we'll get to that later. First, we got to talk about Green Bay at Carolina. It's a 47 point total, Carolina two and a half point favorite. And I don't know if you guys have heard or not, but Aaron Rodgers is coming back. Thank God, because I am so sick of seeing Jordy Nelson just do nothing. Devontae Adams being the only receiver. No, no, no. We got... Mr. Rogers, it's his neighborhood once again, Rich. So what are we doing with Rogers? Can we trust him this week in this matchup? I mean, for me, it's more about what Rogers does for the, you know, the surrounding, you know, aura of the Green Bay Packers. I mean, if you look at the Packers, they have scored on just 17 of 84 drives since Rogers has been out. They scored on 17 drives with Rogers in, you know, through through five weeks so I mean he's he elevates the whole offense it just makes it everyone more high scoring and when it makes everyone more high scoring you know we like the ancillary pieces we like the you know Devontae Adams has actually been fine he's played well through Hundley's you know appearance he's actually been his targets actually spiked way up with the with Brett Hundley than they were with Aaron Rodgers but I mean you've got Jordy now who has gone to just 20 21.9 yards per game with Brett Hundley in all his seven starts uh so now Jordy's back on the board he scored a touchdown in all four of his full games that he played uh with Aaron Rodgers you know outside of that Atlanta game where he left early so he's on the board the sites were cognizant of it because you know Jordy was kind of floating around at like 44 Four forty one hundred on DK. Now they they didn't let us have that, you know, coming back because he would have been like an instant guy for everyone, even with his pedestrian yardage totals. Um, I'm probably not gonna have a lot of Rogers. I mean, it's not a terrible spot. Uh, he he came back and he kind of underperformed when he did. He came back from his injury a couple years ago, and it was his non throwing shoulder. He was the QB eleven that week. He was he scored five points under his season average, uh, but this has been trending downward. I mean, over the past five games, they've allowed. 277 passing yards per game. Uh, that's opposed to 201 prior. Three QB one weeks over that span. One was last week at home uh, to Case Keenum, uh, you know, in a, in a high-volume game. I, I care more about what Rodgers does with this game. Now now we have a chance for a shootout game where it could have just been, you know, a, a Panther smash spot. Yeah, one of the problems, and you kind of mentioned this, how we like the other pieces with Aaron Rodgers. Well, now, okay, now we want to like Jordy Nelson. Hey, he must be discounted. He's done nothing. 
No, not at all. And like you said, yeah. he's probably up to 70 <laughs> over on – he's up 7,200 over on FanDuel. On DK, they've priced him up to 6,300. So, Evan, how are you treating the Green Bay Packers offense? Yeah, so one of the first things I looked at was just like – uh, how the Packers have played <laughs> with Aaron Rodgers in the lineup versus uh, Jamal Williams or versus um, Brett Hundley in the lineup. And of course, they've been much more pass heavy, uh, averaging uh, almost uh, eight more pass attempts or pass dropbacks uh, in when in Rodgers uh, five full games play as compared to uh, Brett Hundley. Uh, and so it, I think it does take some of the volume uh, away from Jamal Williams but it's also going to, or it's likely to lead to more scoring chances. So, you know, that can, that volume loss can, can, can uh, kind of be offset uh, if Jamal Williams is just going to get more touchdown opportunities. But I think that this Panthers defense is a pass funnel and they've given up uh, productive games to quarterbacks. I mean, this is not a scary matchup for Aaron Rodgers. Eight of the last uh, quarter, 11 quarterbacks to face the Panthers have been top 16 finishers. So, a solid floor uh, provided by the Panthers. And for the last five quarterbacks to face, the Panthers have thrown multiple touchdown passes. I'm kind of with Reeves that I don't think that uh, I'm going to have a ton of Rodgers, and that could easily end up being a mistake. But uh, I certainly like side with uh, Reeves uh, in, in terms of trying to play cautiously with quarterbacks coming with any position coming back from uh, extensive time away from the game. A lot of people wanted to play, you know, for instance, Chris Hogan last week, uh, Greg Olson a couple of weeks ago, uh, and they just dudded hard. Um, you know, I think that Aaron Rodgers will be better than that. Uh, but, you know, I'm still kind of shying away from him. I think that Jordy Nelson, you know, he – so if you go back and just, like, average out his games uh, early in the season with Aaron Rodgers, you're not going to get, um, like – strong yardage totals you know you're not going to get uh you know the the kind of stats that you would hope for from him but he uh, essentially missed an, an entire one of those games he only played seven snaps in one of those games uh, so that would bring down the average uh, and he was scoring touchdowns at a ridiculous rate um, I think that this game definitely has shootout potential uh, like Reeves kind of alluded to I think that it, it elevates the outlook for Cam Newton um, mm -hmm. I think that this game can be, you know, very high scoring back and forth. Nothing to fear about the Packers' pass defense at this point. They just placed – or they, they just lost Devon House, who they'd been uh, sometimes using to shadow number one receivers. He's out with a back injury. Uh, the week Last week they placed Kevin King, uh, their second-round pick, who'd been starting at cornerback, a big cornerback. Uh, they placed him on injured reserve. So and – they, and their pass rush has been middling, just middle of the pack. Uh, so – and we, we see Cam, like, he'll have great games uh, when he is uh, kept clean in the pocket. Uh, and uh, he, like, he's a very, like, momentum-driven quarterback. I think that that's, you know, it sounds like it's narrative-driven. But, you know, just watching him for a lot of years, you know, he's, he's a guy that you want him to be. I mean, Warren Sharp, like, we'll call him, like, a front runner. Um, you know, he, he's a guy that you want him to be in positive circumstances. I think that Reeves even has, has stat has uh, shown stats on this. Like you want Cam playing with a lead, which isn't always the case for quarterbacks. You know, you, their, their pass attempts will go up. Their opportunities will go up, will go up when they're playing from behind. You want Cam to be out in front, uh, because that's when he really, uh, has his, his, uh, his, his best games. And I mean, I understand that, you know, that sounds like, uh, you know, a correlation causation issue. But I think that with Cam, it, it really does stand out that um, especially like how he performs early in the game uh, will lead to will, will dictate how he performs throughout the rest of the game. Uh, and I think that he's going to perform really well here. I, I love this game. I mean, right on down to, you know, Greg Olson, I still have a lot of trepidation <laughs> about. Mm -hmm. He was 92 percent of the snaps last week. He blocked 63 percent of the time. Um, but I, I mean, right on down to Demir Bird, who has started to generate some some buzz, uh, tip and pick uh, from uh, football guys. Uh, he mentioned him, uh, and uh, Pat Thorman mentioned uh, Demir Bird. Uh, he is now the Panthers' number two receiver. He played almost 60% of the snaps last week. 22 routes, caught five of five targets. Uh, he is a 427 guy. He's really small. He's five foot nine, but he's a 427 speedster, 42 inch vertical at his pro day coming out of South Carolina. 
Um, and I mean, he's, I think he's min price on both sites. And uh, he was a guy that in the preseason, you wanted to play with Joe Webb. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, he was, he was a moneymaker with Joe Webb. Um, I mean, there, there was a preseason slate where, you know, like on FanDuel, it, it'll, you know, it, you know, it'll, it'll show like the top 10. I had Joe Webb and uh, Demir Bird stacks one week, and I had all of my teams were in the top 10. You know, that was the closest I'll ever get to Eric Crane that week in the preseason. Um, you know, so that, that was a very good feeling. So I'll always have a special place in my heart for Demir Bird, but his opportunity is up. You know, I don't think we can project him for any more than like four to six targets in all likelihood, but the matchup is great. He's a great athlete, uh, and I think he's a guy worth discussion. Well, that's good. I'm glad, and I hope he gets in the box a little bit because I do not want to see another three touchdown game from Jonathan Stewart. You know, it's a good <laughs> thing. It's a good thing I think that Aaron Rodgers is playing in this game, like Evan said, for Cam Newton, because there's no way that Cam is just going to try and sit on a lead and just try and run the clock out when he's got Rodgers on the other side. So Reeves, I can see Cam throwing the ball 40 times here, trying to put up a lot of points to keep up with that Green Bay offense. So I love Cam in this matchup. Yeah, I love Cam. I mean, he's he's running like crazy too. Like, I mean, he's got 8.4 rushing points per game over his last eight games. Uh, you know, we love that as a floor. And like Evan said, I mean, you get him in these positive games here. It's not just because of, uh, you know, the – I call it, it's referred to it as on-script offense. And the Carolina Panthers, when they are on-script as an offense, they are doing a lot of things offensively. And when you're able to – you can't do those things when you become a one-dimensional offense. So when you stay in your base offense and you, you can run those RPOs, you can get Christian McCaffrey mixed in the run pass game. You can use Jonathan Stewart. You can harness Cam Newton's full ability. That's when you start popping those big plays. Like you saw it happen on Monday night, a couple weeks ago against Miami. Those are the games when Cam goes ballistic. I mean, this, this game's at home is a, a, a just a real poor secondary. There's a real good chance this could be one of those games for Cam Newton. Uh, so, I mean, I'm all about Cam Newton. I mean, Devin Funches on both sites, He's priced outside of a wide receiver ones on both sites. He is getting targeted, uh, you know, nearly at the same same rate per route, you know, as a Julio Jones or as Antonio Brown. He's been targeting 28.3% of his routes over the past five weeks. He even – he hit in a spot last week where we had no expectations for him at all. I mean, granted, it was a, a blown play he scored the touchdown on, but th those still count. I mean, he, he's, it counts he the same, was, baby. Hey, man, they still count. So that's sex. He had it. So, I mean, we, we take those, man. I mean, when you can hit in those games where we're not counting on you, I mean, those matter. You're getting those targets. You have seven targets against the Minnesota Vikings. That matters, you know, when your target rate is still up there. You know, because you know, I thought he was a guy whose skill set just was a total mismatch for Xavier Rhodes. You know, Xavier Rhodes' length, just being on He caught a back shoulder ball, one of the first drives on the sideline, and a real nice play. Uh, so, I mean, I'm all in on Devin Funches. I like that. I like playing him. I like Demir Bird, like Evan said. I mean, he's like the cheap guy you go to in this game because you can you're paying you're paying for everyone everyone we want to we want to play uh you're paying for because those Packers guys aren't coming at a discount or Jordy isn't at least you know like one guy we would hope that was at a discount uh like Evan said there's no tight end play to really like latch on this game Olsen's playing snaps but Green Bay's been really good against tight ends it could be a byproduct that they're just getting crushed by receivers uh, like targets don't really don't really go there but I mean you saw it last week, too. Joku was hot, and they gave him no burn. He ran, like, 14 pass routes. Uh, and then you you guys talked about Jonathan Stewart a little bit, but, like, it's not a bad spot for Jonathan Stewart again. It really isn't. I mean, he's gone over 100 yards in two of his past four games. Green Bay has just allowed the first 100-yard rushing games of the season to Peyton Barber and Isaiah Crowell in back-to-back -back weeks. Uh, it's, it's not a terrible spot for him again. You know he's going to get some bunny touches if they get there, and then – McCaffrey's kind of slowed down a little bit his targets and touches have dropped a little bit but it's not a bad spot for him either in a shootout because Green Bay is 27th in receiving points allowed to running back so I mean it's kind of an all or all in situation here I mean, this game has a lot of chance to pop because Rodgers is in now you know you mentioned Devin Funches sir I'll give you a little quiz Reeves you know the last time Funches saw less than six targets in a game it was probably man probably like week four or five week one Ooh. Week one was the last time Funch saw less than six targets in a game. 66 on an over on DK. I yeah, can I love that. Find that. Evan, what do you think about these running backs for Carolina? I, I, I can't do it. I it feels like McCaffrey might have hit a wall. I mean, I'm not playing Jonathan Stewart. You know, I, I'm, not, I'm just not doing it. I'm not clicking that button. I don't want to click that button. Only three guys score touchdowns for them. I'm just going to have Cam and Funch. <laughs> if, it, if it's Stewart, I lose. 
Like, then I'm just going <laughs> to lose in that case. Evan, what do you think about either of these running backs in the team? No, I think that Jonathan Stewart is just super chasey. I mean, he's like – nothing changed for him last week. He hasn't caught a pass since week five. He just happened to, you know, fall in the end zone. I mean, he's running well. Like, their their running game is not broken like it was, you know, earlier in the season. Um, but he's so touchdown dependent, and he has a, such a terrible floor. And he can have good games, and I'll still, you know, even in season long, just leave him on my bench. You know, it's – nothing really has changed, you, you know, and – Christian McCaffrey, I just I wish that he was getting the ball more. The game the game does set up well for Christian McCaffrey to maybe have a spike. Um, you know, the Packers have given up a ton of receiving production to RBs as well. Uh, I think that you can play him with Cam in tournaments. He's kind of a long shot at this point. Um, but you know, if you if you think that the price is right and you're you're trying to like game stack it, I think it does make sense. <sighs> I know this is nutty, and I and I understand, Reeves, you just kind of poo-pooed on this, but Greg Olson is still running routes, and eventually Greg Olson is going to have a Greg Olson game. Evan, I, Reeves already kind of said no to this, but it, I, I just look at this price on Olson, 4000 over on DraftKings, and I'm going to have a lot of trouble if I'm playing some cam, not clicking on a few Greg Olson shares. I mean, I'm not going to argue hard against it. You know, I, I love Greg Olson. He hasn't had more than four targets in a single game this year uh and he's had no production in any game this year he hasn't scored more uh, so than four points in the game. it's a leap of faith play and as long as you know what you're getting into you know <laughs> i <ever>. mean <laughs> and that's this was back in the last year for him too if you look at his back his back half of last season he was awful too uh, i Oof. i mean look i i'm not saying i love the play i'm just saying that the talent is it's not like he's just all of a sudden a bad tight end and he's yeah. 4k and <laughs> He should be the number two or three option on this offense. So. Well, the, the stuff that happened last year was like, you know, his quarterback was sure. playing through a torn labrum in his throwing shoulder. So, um, I mean, I expected Greg Olson to have a good year this year. You know, I, I definitely did. Um, and he got hurt, and he hasn't. So. I feel like Evan's going to have some Greg Olson this weekend. <laughs> like, I can see it. I will not. Sure. I will not. Oh, <laughs> mix, no. Mix it with you. <laughs> I mean, every every dude that's come back recently from that injury, though, has been bad. Like, everyone that's come back, like, in season from that injury has not been good and been themselves. It's taken a full year, a long time to get to get going off that injury. Well, when you're talking about guys who haven't been good, let's go to the next game. And it's Tennessee at San Francisco, 44-point total. San Fran, two-point favorites. Reeves, I am so sick of Marcus Mariota being in my life. Every Two-point favorites? San Francisco is a favorite, right? I know. I know. It's, it's strange, <laughs> isn't it? But Marcus Mariota has just been woof. Just yeah. talk to me about this game because you, you, it's like, other than Marquise Goodwin, I've written off everybody on these teams. So I need somebody to explain to me why this is a game we're going to target. I think the way the tight end sets up, I mean, I'm really interested okay. in Delaney yeah. Walker. Yeah. Yeah, anyway. yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely real interested in Delaney Walker because, I mean, to me, like, it's Gronk, and then I think Ertz is still in play a little bit. With There's just a little bit of an unknown factor now with Ertz. Uh, and then, then there's Delaney, and then there's not a lot at tight end, man. Uh, and, you know, he had a he could have had a big game last week. He had two pretty bad drops that would have spiked his totals. Uh, he's getting all their receiving yardage work. You know, he's got 31% of the receiving yardage over the past seven weeks. 49ers have been kind of victimized by tight ends since they lost Joukowsky Tart and uh, Eric Ward or Jimmy Ward. Uh, they've allowed six tight end ones over the past seven weeks. I mean, he's in play. I think Rashard Matthews is interesting just where he's probably. Uh, I mean, he returned last week too, and we knew he wasn't going to hit last week. You know, you come back off a two-week hamstring injury. We already weren't going to like that, and you return it against Patrick Peterson. And he's not the type of dude that can get open on a Patrick Peterson anyways. But San Francisco, man, they've been getting kind of roasted by lead receivers. They've allowed uh, 100 yards or a touchdown to, to a lead wide receiver in three of their past four games. He's dirt cheap, and we know he's got scoring ability. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to run him out in cash or anything, but he's, I think he's got touchdown potential uh, in this game. Uh, I, I can't I can't really tell you about Mariota at this point. I mean, they're trying to float out stuff now uh, to cover the tracks of him playing as poorly as, as he has. Uh, even though he's practicing in full, they're going to let us know that he's got all these ailments. Uh, that's fine if he's got them. I mean, he's been awful. Uh, and, and, you know, you can point it to a lot of things. I mean, he's been bad. They haven't had uh, 
any cohesion in offense. They can't run the football like they did last year. There's a lot of things in the way of Marcus Mariota. Plus, he was a guy that was due regression anyways. I mean, his touchdown rate was through the roof last year. Uh, but he's been terrible, man. He's thrown for under 200 yards three games in a row. He has also uh, given us nothing in a bunch of good matchups. He had a game versus Cleveland where they didn't even score a touchdown. He had a game versus the Colts a couple weeks ago where he was the QB 27. Uh, he cannot be trusted, even though the 49ers just allowed TJ Yates to be a QB one uh, and basically two and a half quarters of football. And Eli Manning was a QB one against them too, uh, you know, over the past four weeks. I mean, it, I, I'll probably run Mariota out in a couple flyer tournaments, but like, I tell you what, it's not going to be any type of ownership. It's just going to be just to, have one or two like dumb lineups if this hits, uh, but I have no confidence in him at this point. But I think Matthews and Walker are interesting. Yeah, the last time I rolled at Mariota was week 13 against Houston, and that obviously – I thought he was going to run all over him like he started to in that first match, but in that game, and obviously he didn't end up doing it. Evan, what's your take on Mariota? What's wrong with this guy? Uh, I mean, there is there are several different explanations for what could be going wrong here. Um he the bottom line is that he stinks. I mean, <laughs> Pretty much. he he stinks. He stinks. Uh, he it seems like he stares at the rush. Uh, he doesn't you know play with. He's not accurate. He plays with like no confidence. I mean, he that may just be the bottom line. Like we can blame it on a number of different things: injuries, coaching staff. He just he plays with no confidence. I mean, we're hundred percent going to hear about a Marcus Mariota injury after the year. They're going to say something, right? Uh, no, there was a report today from uh, mm-hmm. Paul Kuharski, longtime Titans beat writer, that he is going to need knee surgery after the season. Um, yeah. So, yeah, so it's already I mean, happening. Yeah, yeah. Well, of course, uh, that, that explains it all. That's why he's overthrown receivers by twenty yards. You yeah. know, over their head right into the safety's arms. But yeah, so. On the Tennessee side, I'm definitely on Delaney. I kind of poo-pooed earlier in, this, earlier in the show, but, yeah, no, I'm definitely on Delaney. Every single week I play this guy. Rashard, I don't know if I can get behind. And on the other side, we got Marquise Goodwin, who seems to be the preferred oh, target yeah. of Jimmy Garoppolo. 6K over on, on uh, DraftKings. And I normally – you know, this is one of those spots where two months ago, if you had told me I was paying 6K for Marquise Goodwin and feeling good about it, I would have said you were nuts. But, Rich, he he's – 12 targets last week I mean it's just he seems to be a relatively safe play even at 6k yeah and like Evan brought up last week with Dean you know we missed you last week Eric but uh you know he hasn't caught these long balls yet either so he's not he's posting consistent wide receiver two lines now without even leaning on that you know 50 yard bomb that YOLO ball you know, he's getting, you know, he had the long catch and run on a ball last week, but he's getting now peppered with like catchable targets. And if you're going to give a guy like we talked about last week, if you're going to give a guy like that a floor, eventually one of those splash plays is going to hit and that floor is going to turn into a ceiling. So he's had a, two wide receiver, two games in a row, back to back with Garoppolo. So, I mean, I, I love him still right where he's priced. I think he fits a lot of builds. Um, like I said, he's got the floor upside that you look for the target volume. And it's like, he's not just getting targets like, we're talking about Josh Gordon targets. He's getting efficient targets, targets he can play with. Uh, So, I mean, yeah, I'm in on him. Um, I don't know what to do at Jimmy GQ, man. Uh, The passing yards have been there, 293, 334. The matchup is one of those where you look at it and it's like, well, the yardage is going to be there to conduce the yardage. Tennessee is 21st in yardage allowed per game to quarterbacks. They've given us a big yardage. But, I mean, just like we talked about last week, I mean, the, the touchdowns are still a problem for Garoppolo. Um, I don't know if he, he can just get over that hurdle. I just don't know if this offense has like a lot of guys that can, where, where you can get, you know, inflation on touchdown totals. Uh, and the, the Titans have only allowed multiple touchdown passes in three of their past nine games. So, I mean, it's one of those where I think he's, he's another one of those guys. I think he's like a high floor QB two. Uh, but you know, you, you need to run into those multiple tuds, you know, to be at the quarterback position. And I don't know if he's got that in his repertoire yet, but, uh, definitely good one though. Yeah, the problem is he's priced 100 bucks cheaper than Cam Newton. And I just can't yeah. <laughs> I can't pay 6300 for Garoppolo when I can pay 6400 for Cam. Or even I can go down, you know, save a few hundred bucks and go to Kirk Cousins. So, Evan, with this 49ers offense, is it pretty much just Goodwin for you? Or are you still looking at Carlos Hyde? Um, I, I do like Carlos Hyde a little bit. I, I wanted to talk about Garoppolo a little bit. So, I, th- you know, I've made the mistake of trying to tee off on this Titans pass defense. Uh, Every and- week. Yeah, and it has worked out sometimes. You know, I went really hard um, on him with that in that Ben um, Antonio week where they were on Thursday night uh, on the Thursday Monday slate, but it really hurt uh, the Jacoby Brissett week. 
And uh, last week I had a bunch of gabber, like a total donkey. Uh, and, you know, I wouldn't chalk that all up to the Titans uh, because Blaine Gabbert was just a – Oh. He was a trash can. He – He was Blaine Gabbert. He he missed so many throws, man. Like, it was it was painful. Uh, I mean, he had, he had Larry Fitz, you know, who was the chalk play of the week, I guess. I, I'm surprised that that was the case, but that ended up being the case. He was a very good play. It's just Gabbert couldn't hit him. Uh, I mean, he had – Larry Fitz uh, opened down the left sideline for a huge gain uh, and just overthrew him and then overthrew him wide open in the end zone. He had gotten behind uh, Logan Ryan. So a lot of yards, a lot of, you know, scoring uh, left on the left on the field last week by Blaine Gabbert. Uh, but the Titans have been hot in terms of their pass rush, 20 sacks in their last three games. Now they played Blaine Gabbert, Tom Savage, and Jacoby Brissett during that span. So that will definitely spike your sack total. Uh, but just two of the last nine quarterbacks to face the Titans have been top 12 uh, finishers on the week. Jimmy Garoppolo has, he has issues in his pass catcher core. Now I think that the conversation might be a little bit different. You know, the box score would obviously be, be a little bit different if Carlos Hyde had caught that uh, touchdown last week. Um, but, and you know, Garoppolo finishes with two touchdowns and like 380 yards, you know, and, and uh, he's, you know, being, you know, he, he's, he's already got the gold jacket on. Um, but uh, I, I think that Robbie Gould is, is play week in and week out. The, the 49ers just simply do not have touchdown scorers in their receiver core. Marquise mm -hmm. Goodwin looks like a positive touchdown regression candidate on paper, but he's five foot eight. Like, you know, is he ever going to be a big time touchdown scorer? I don't you know. know. They... Five foot eight sounds pretty tall to me, Evan. <laughs> All right. Fair enough, Crane. <laughs> um, they, you know, they rotate their tight ends, uh, you know, and then they rotate their complementary receivers Lewis Murphy, Trent Taylor, um, Kendrick Bourne, Aldrick Robinson. All these guys are like sharing time. Uh, so, you know, it's just, I, I don't think it's a good of a matchup. I don't like this game. Mm -hmm. I don't like investing in the Titans, in Titans games anymore, you know, even for their opponents. Uh, I would say that I think that Carlos Hyde has a shot here. Uh, he's a home favorite against the, uh, a Tennessee defense that um, the, the Cardinals ran the ball really well on them last week. Uh, they're missing Daquan Jones, who they lost to a torn biceps. He, he's, he's on IR. He was a difference maker in the running game a couple weeks ago. Titans have also given up the fourth most catches and second most receiving yards to opposing RBs. Uh, Carlos Hyde, I think, is he's priced pretty pretty nicely on FanDuel at 6,900. Um, I'm not sure what his DK price is. Uh, his passing and usage has been down lately, uh, with you know Garoppolo playing just being a little bit more aggressive down the field than CJ Beathard. And he's lost double digit touches to Matt Breida in three of the last four games. So from a like a box score standpoint, concerns with Carlos Hyde. I think that from a matchup standpoint, very, you know, very good from a from a spot standpoint, he checks that box. From a talent standpoint, he checks that box. From a price standpoint, he checks that box. And it's just gonna come down to usage and you know, will Kyle Shanahan commit to giving him 20 touches in a game? You know, I think that that will kind of de depend on how the game goes. All right. Well, let's move on then. Let's talk about the game of the week. And it's not even close when we call this the game of the week. It's the Pats at the Steelers. Pats coming off a shocking loss to the Dolphins. 53-point total. The Patriots are three-point favorites. We're going to see some angry Tom Brady this year, I think, Reeves. <laughs> and uh, in Pittsburgh, they're not so good against the Pats. And... I just want to, I mean, we were talking about there are so many good quarterback plays, so maybe this isn't the right strategy. But part of me just wants to play 150 angry Brady teams. <laughs> yeah, definitely sets up to be one of those angry Brady spots. And he's he's torched the, this defense the past three times they faced. Uh, he's faced this this team the past few times, similar scheme. Uh, and, you know, the, the Steelers, man, they've just lost so many guys on defense. I mean, they're just starting to get gouged. Uh, and it's opened up the floodgates and passing, too, with them being at home and their defense being poor. I mean, Pittsburgh's allowing 286 passing yards per game over their past six games. It's 30th in the league. They were first in the league prior to that, to that stretch. 
Uh, and that's allowed the Steelers to go one. It's forced them to go pass heavy because they've actually been trailing the last two weeks by quite a significant margin. They've also played three of their past four games at home, and this game will be at home as well. So they've been able to play with a little more tempo. I mean, they've thrown the ball 71% of the time the past four weeks. Uh, they're just winging it, winging it around. We saw even even if you remove that 66 passing uh, attempt game from last week, they're still well north of 65% those three previous games. Uh, they're, they're throwing it. They're throwing it a lot. I mean, Le'Veon's just transferred getting like fewer rushing attempts to just stacking like more touches we want. Like we, this is the Le'Veon Bell we want. We want him not to have 25 rushing attempts. We're cool with him having 16 to 18 rushing attempts. If he's going to catch a dozen passes, you know, and get a dozen targets every week, because those are inherently more valuable touches for fantasy football. And that's why his ceiling has just come all the way back. And he, you're posting you know the, a couple weeks ago he had uh, a 25 point game with no touchdowns like dudes don't do that uh but you know I mean so I mean he's on the board I think everyone wants to try to fit Antonio and Le'Veon in as much it's as it's hard <laughs> yeah man it is hard but everyone wants to I mean, unless, you so unless you play Demir Bird unless you play Demir Bird Oh, the bird man. Oh, oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> hey, you know what? I, the first thing I did when I opened up this slate was I I did a little experiment. All right, let's see what happens if I put Bell and Brown and let's see some Ben. All right, some Cook. You can do it on Fanduel. Oh, yeah, on DK you can't. If on DK <laughs> if you do it, you have to use like the Jets defense for 2K, which is a problem. <laughs> You can so, do it on FanDuel. I've built a couple of lineups that I feel pretty moderately solid about. <laughs> well, yeah, but uh, not, yeah, everyone wants to play those guys, man. I mean, everyone oh, wants to play them. Yeah, of course. But the problem is the <laughs> price stuff. But, yeah. I mean, like you said, Bell, 9300 And, yeah, he's the most expensive guy on the slate. But, I mean, Evan, I mean, we talk about a floor with a ceiling. It's just Le'Veon. Like, you're never going to go and feel bad about whatever Le'Veon Bell does unless he gets hurt or suspended mid-game. No, and his matchup is awesome. I mean, facing this, you know, uh, short week uh, road trip, traveling Patriots defense that's just been getting smashed by RBs. Uh, 4.95 yards per carry allowed to RBs on the season. Uh, third most receiving yards allowed to running backs on the season. Kenyon Drake just lit him up for 193 total yards. Um, so, I mean, I love what, what Reeves was saying about his passing game usage. He's averaging 82 receiving yards per game over his last four. Um, he's, you know, them using him in the passing game, it's, he's unfair when he gets in space. And that's an easy way to get him in space. And that has been, a, I think, a key to unlocking their offense. You know, they were very uneven, even offensively early in the season. And all of a sudden, they're hitting on all cylinders because they're using, you know, their stud RB uh, in the passing game. So, I mean, he's, he's an incredible, incredible play. And I'm, I'm certainly trying to jam him, man. I mean, he's got, he has 20 or more touches in, uh, in 12 straight games, 12 straight games, 20 or more touches. That, that's just, that's just stupid. You, you know, it's, I mean, it's, it's awesome. I'm sorry. Not stupid. It is awesome. It's stupid. Uh, yeah. Stupid. Awesome. That, that's a good way to 35 catches the past four games. It's third in the NFL. <laughs> you just play him. Don't <laughs> like don't don't say well he's gonna be popular so I want to be under <laughs> no you plug him in your lineups you figure out the rest later there uh, look you can find cheap guys with upside always it's the guys like Le'Veon that are I mean he's ninety three I would actually argue that he's a little bit underpriced because I mean if you put his price at ten five you're you're getting wasn't he pushing like nine eight last year at the end of last year well this is DJ. the conversation that we had last year it was yeah, him and team DJ. jam him in. And if you weren't team jamming them in, you were losing money And every single week. I mean, there were some weeks where I didn't team jam them in and I was like, all right, next week I'm going to team jam them in. And I did and I won, you know, and then, you know, I didn't and then I lost, you know, it was, it was really that simple. And Le'Veon has reached that, uh, you know, that, that level of must use ability. Yeah, so it's I, just AB there too. Is AB the DJ that we put, is, <laughs> you just do it. I mean, we can talk about AB. You know, I haven't, I, I have not broken down this game fully. I was like waiting on this game a little bit. Uh, do you have anything for us historically on Antonio Brown historically against the Patriots, Reeves? 
Oh yeah, he's gotten yeah. uh yeah he, he so he's lit Malcolm Butler up. And Malcolm Butler's and Malcolm Butler's a guy who's been getting lit up uh sporadically. He he has like still he's like a guy if you check out like he grades out well and like give up grade stuff. But every time we watch him in like a, a spot, like he's getting done up by someone. Emmanuel Sanders put a clinic on Malcolm Butler a few weeks ago. Uh Jakeem Grant is skying over him for touchdowns. Uh so so Antonio <laughs> Brown, he's got uh seven or more catches in the past three times teams these teams have played he's gone over 100 yards in two of those games one of those was with Landry Jones as his quarterback as well against Malcolm Butler um I don't know if it's far-fetched to say that maybe maybe Bill looks at this matchup and flips it and said because Gilmore has been playing a lot better than Butler and says we need to put Gilmore I don't think it matters with Antonio Brown I I mean to be honest I don't I mean we can head down this road but maybe he he says, you know, I'm going to try Gilmore out because I've got this three-game sample of Malcolm Butler getting torched by this guy, and he's not playing as, as good as the other guy. Maybe I'll try something out. But one guy is not going to get it done on Antonio Brown. It doesn't really matter. Um, they just – and, you know, when I look at the other receivers in the league and we watch Antonio Brown, especially because they've, they've played on primetime three of the past four weeks as well, um, it's amazing that, like, he's able to get all these targets with, like, not as much attention as you think. Like, he's, he, he constantly finds himself in these one-on-one situations. You look at that ball he caught to set up that game-winning field goal last week. He's one-on-one with not even the first or second best cornerback on the Baltimore Ravens. Like, how, like, how, how is this happening? Like, how is this happening in, like, today's NFL? Like, we're, you know, they, you're, they line up and they say, listen, we need to find out where 84 is at. He's the only guy that can beat us in this situation. This Because Le'Veon was out at that point. He can't hurt you. But we, we've, we've got one guy that can that can lose the game for us. And you let him just beat you over the top on a one-on-one. Yeah, one coverage. job. Like, we're, one yeah, job. We're, and you try to jam him. The guy goes to the press. He gets stacked right away. You know, AB a, stacks him within, you know, you know eight yards. And it's done. It's a wrap. I mean, it's amazing that teams are cloud coverage towards this guy. Uh, it's, it's amazing. And he's doing this with his hurt foot. His hurt well, toe. In, yeah. in the cocoon, we <laughs> run our defense. And <laughs> you got to beat us, you know. That's yeah, what we Jimmy do. We Smith run, we run our Baltimore. defense. It doesn't matter who you have. We run our defense, you know, and, and then, you know, we, we go home. Oh, they beat us. You know, we, we on the, on the bus crying. Um, <laughs> they, I mean, the, the Ravens, in fairness, in fairness to the Ravens though, they did have a lot of double teams on them last week. And I mean, he was crushing double teams <laughs> and uh, you know, I, he's, he's just amazing. He, what did he finish with like 218, 218 yards? It was a yeah. lot more than I had. And, and he was real close to like a 40 yard touchdown real early in the game. I mean, he could have yeah. had, remember mm-hmm. that? Yeah. He could have had like 260 in a touchdown. I mean, it was, you know, it was real close uh, to, to being that he's, he's a cut above man. He is, you know, he's, he's our Steph from last year. He's our Jerry Rice. You know, he, he's an unbelievable, unbelievable player. I mean, goodness gracious, he's unbelievable. Yeah, and this week you need at least one of Bell or Brown in every single lineup you build. Look, it's it, it, this, the Patriots aren't shutting out anybody. It's going to be one of these two guys, probably both of them going off. So get one, get one of them in, get two of them in if you want, but make sure you have at least one. On the Patriots side, Rich, I mean – this, pay, this Steelers defense has just been torched through the air. We've already talked about kind of Brady. Are you looking for Gronk? Are you looking at Brandon Cooks, who almost put up a goose egg last week? I mean, Chris Hogan, maybe he's healthy now. Where are you looking at on the Patriots offense? Yeah, we finally had our Cooks moment. You know, we kind of think we, were, we expected more of these. Uh, there's he, he, he has these games in New Orleans where he would get, you know, kind of gobbled up by cornerbacks once in a while. And that happened, man. Xavier Howard was in his – in his pocket, man, all Monday night. But I'm going back to him this week, man. I don't think any – I mean, I think people are going to want a more turn towards Gronk coming back. Uh, and Gronk is in, is in a great spot. Gronk has absolutely massacred the Steelers, man. He scored eight touchdowns in five career games against them. No Ryan Shazier, the best coverage linebacker the Steelers had. It's it's a good spot for Gronk for sure. But I do – I mean, if you look at where the Steelers are getting beat uh, – 40% of the receiving yards they have a lot of come on throws 15 yards or further downfield that's the highest rate in the league uh you know what receiver catches the highest percent of his receiving yards on throws that far downfield it's Brandon I, Cooks oh I so I mean it's 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 pretty much a, a, a quite a symmetry spot and I mean you can tell me Joe Hayden's practicing uh I'm not going to fear Joe Hayden coming off a broken leg uh you know at all by any means so I mean uh Cooks is a guy I'm going to probably try to go over on this week while everyone tries to come in on Gronk Oh, for good reason to play Gronk, too. I'm definitely not saying that that's not an optimal play. But I definitely think it's a really good spot for Brandon Cooks. 
play them both. Life becomes easy. You just play them both. I mean, that's that's kind of where I'm going. Are you going? Are you on Team Gronk? Or are you on Team Cook? Seven? Or are you in Team? Doesn't matter. Just get one of them in. Jam yeah, in. I, team I would never be not on Team Gronk ever. Yeah. That's not <laughs> not a side that I want to be on. Um, just we could just look at the receivers that the Steelers have faced recently. Uh, Marvin Jones, six for one twenty-eight. This is over their last six weeks. Marvin Jones, six for one twenty-eight. Rashard Matthews, five for one thirteen and a touchdown. Chester Rogers, Chester Rogers, six for 104 and a touchdown. TJ Jones, four for 88. Golden Tate, seven for 86. Devontae Adams, five for 82 and a touchdown. AJ Green, seven for 77 and two touchdowns. Mike Wallace, three for 72. Dante Moncrief, one for 60 and a touchdown. Chris Moore, three for 48 and a touchdown. So that's just a bunch of receivers producing above uh, the, the level of expectation that you have for them. And that to me, is a very good sign. I'm, I'm totally on board with uh, Brandon Cooks. You had me at and um, <laughs> whoever that guy was from the Ravens that I can't remember, never remember his game. What was that guy's name? Chris Moore. Chris Moore. Where the <laughs> hell does Chris Moore come from? I know Evans, I'm sure, has like the scouting report memorized where he's just like, he was actually a spark score stud or something. Like that seems like a thing that Evan would that say. That dude has like five career touchdowns and three of them are recovering fumbles in the end zone. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he led Conference USA in uh, 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 receiving yards mm-hmm. uh, or uh, yards per re- uh, reception uh, as a as a during his final year at Cincinnati. He, he, was, slow he, he, combine, he, he was slow at the combine, though. He was slow at the combine. Combine. Mm-hmm. So I don't I don't think he's very good, but I mean he's had some decent games this year. He's he's a vertical receiver without speed. That's a problem. <laughs> that is a problem with Joe Flacco. <laughs> oh man at least there's one quarterback we can just cross off our list this week all right let's talk about the thursday saturday slate because we've got uh we got three games we've actually got some decent sized contests across the industry maybe though not the best games we got it's denver at indy it's chicago at detroit and it's the chargers at the chiefs and that's probably the premier game on the entire slate reeves when you're looking at this three game slate i'm trying just, let's just talk about quarterbacks is it philip rivers and then everybody else for you I, I can tell you right now that I'm going to play a lot of Trevor Simeon on the slate. Uh, I mean, the Colts have allowed the most. <laughs> <laughs> the Colts have allowed the most QB one games to non quarterback ones on the season. Uh, dude, they have no cornerbacks left. They have uh, two rookies are starting at cornerback for them. Quincy Wilson and Kenny Moore. Uh, these dudes haven't even played all year. They just they just have no one left. They have no they have just no physical bodies left to play in the secondary anymore. Uh, I mean, listen, I'm not gonna tell you that Simeon's a great play, but I think the way the slate stacks up and everyone's gonna x out Jacoby Brissett, which you should. Uh, we're gonna x out Alex Smith, as you should. So I mean, we're down to four guys, man. Bye bye Mitchell Trubisky. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I could make an argument for Mitchell Trubisky, but I'm not going to uh, on the road. So I mean, man, I look at this game, man. This and like uh, Raymond Summerlin, uh, the guy I do a show with, he brought up on the show today that teams that go into overtime and play on Thursday the next week are one in fourteen. Uh, you know, in those spots. So I mean, it's it's. A, I think the Broncos, man, like their defense is isn't. They've given up passing touchdowns. We're not giving up passing yardage. They're still formidable. We saw it last week. They have a good enough personnel still to hamper a team like the Jets and a team like the Colts. But the Colts team, this Colts team can't score. So, I mean, I look at, like, a Simeon Demarius stack. I mean, even a guy that, like, Emmanuel Sanders. Emmanuel Sanders has 54 yards this past four games. <laughs> you know, Rich, it's, it's funny. And I, I, I'll tell you what, the reason I gave you that look, it wasn't like a shocked look like Evan was. It, the one guy I played more than anything on the Monday, Thursday slate was Trevor Simeon. Bang, bang. Bang, bang. Evan, make it three for three, buddy. Uh, I haven't even looked at this slate at all. I, I'm, I'm so interested. I mean, I, and I, I just pulled it up, and, you know, Reeves says he's going to play a lot of Trevor Simeon. I looked at the quarterback pricing, and I'm like, okay. You know, like Rivers and Stafford are priced as, like, elite quarterbacks on this particular slate. Um, can't really play Jacoby Brissett at this point. Uh, Trubisky, I think, is mildly interesting, but – Ultimately, not really a guy that you want to play. I mean, he's, a, he's been a good fantasy quarterback in one of nine starts. Don't want to play Alex Smith against the Chargers. I think that Stafford does have upside at home mm-hmm. against the Bears. 
Uh, and I think that Rivers can have a good game, but based on price, like Simeon is the guy here. I mean, at 6,000 on FanDuel, you know, that's, he, he, he does make some sense. I, I certainly wouldn't play him on Thursday through Monday. You know? No, no, no. no. <laughs> but, but when we're just, when we're breaking this game down like a Thanksgiving slate, uh, he is very intriguing. I'll be interested to see how high owned he is. I haven't even made a team for this this Thursday through Saturday slate. Are you guys going to hit it hard? It's a three-game slate. Of course I'm hitting it hard. Yeah, yeah I mean, I got, I've got that thanks and give me money I got to chase back on these slates. <laughs> Here, uh, here's an interesting stat. It's a fun slate, though, man. I think that the yeah. games are like, yeah. overall are pretty fun. What RBs are you looking at here? The so death killer, Jordan Howard. Yeah. I loaded up on Jordan Howard last week. Smart. That was nice, man. Great call. Um, I really wasn't into him. I wasn't into the spot, but I mean, he's, he's, every time he's had a good game, he's followed up with a dud, but like this matchup was really good. I mean, the Lions have a lot of rushing touchdown at eight straight games. They have a lot of RB1 and four of their past five games. It's, it's a it's good not spot. Just, for it's them. not just a rushing touchdown in their last eight, it's 14 rushing touchdowns in their last eight. <laughs> they're hemorrhaging rushing touchdowns yeah they're just, just handing you, them out you gotta you the, your biggest worry here is that Stafford really plays well which I think he, mm-hmm. he can he's played well historically against Vic Fangio's defenses I mean he's been a top eight fantasy quarterback in four of their last five meetings that is your concern you know mm-hmm. that Matthew Stafford throws it throws it all around the yard and I think he really could here um, but the matchup is so dope for for Jordan Howard I mean absolutely I mean, you know who I'm going to say. I'm going to say, it, by the way, this I know who you're saying. Game on this slate, it's like the two running backs that I am so sick of, both of them. Kareem Hunt, who I finally stopped playing last week. Finally, thanks, Kareem. And Melvin <laughs> Gordon, who sucks, but I keep clicking the button. And like, I'm just going to play both these guys. And then I'm, you know, what's going to happen? All my Trevor Simeon teams are going to do great. I'm going to be, I'm going to be patting myself on the back for Trevor Simeon. And the next thing I know, both of these crappy running backs are going to be outscored by Tariq Cohen or something and just tick me off when, by the time Saturday comes around. Anyways, Evan, I'll ask you, what do you think about Melvin Gordon and Kareem Hunt? What, what would you think about him if your microphone was unmuted? Yeah, I mean, I wound up playing a bunch of Kareem Hunt last week uh, against the Raiders. I mean, just as like a, in tournaments, you know, and he was he was real solid. I mean, he, you know, he didn't really win it for you, but he was a good play, you know. Um, he, he He's good. I mean, he's, he's really good. Like, that's not the issue, you know. It's like, yeah. will the Chargers go to Kansas City and pour points on him because – the Chiefs defense is terrible. However, the home field advantage there is just ridiculous. Uh, I mean, the Chiefs have held each of their last 12 opponents to 20 points or fewer. And, I mean, no one goes to Kansas City and scores points on them. You know, that, like, that just doesn't happen. However, this Chiefs, this Chargers offense is really humming, and they have, like, the specific weapons to really attack the weaknesses of the Chiefs, uh, beginning with Keenan Allen. Uh, and Hunter Henry. Um, I mean, the Chiefs haven't been good against tight ends, you know, since uh, losing Eric Berry in week one. Uh, so it's a really interesting game to kind of analyze. Uh, I mean, I, I you know, I, I can make, you know, good, like, arguments for a bunch of different people. They, the, Char- the Chiefs also give up, like, a ton of big plays in the passing game, which I don't – it's tough to really rely on Tyrell Williams or Travis Benjamin, but it sets them up well. You know, and it sets up the Chargers offense well. It sets up Phillip Rivers well. So, uh, I, I don't know. It's it, it's it's a to analyze. It's a, a huge game in, in real life football. Mm-hmm. And ultimately, I think that it, it does have, you know, one of the issues, though, is that is the Chiefs offense going to produce against the Chargers defense? I mean, Alex Smith stunk when he faced the Chargers earlier in the season. No one has done well from a passing game standpoint against the Chargers, except for like Tom Brady back in, I don't know, what was it like week eight? No one has done well against the Chargers uh, pass defense. Uh, and so it's, I don't know, it's, it, it's, it's a difficult game to analyze, I think, honestly. And, you know, you made a good point, and I saw Reeves on this head too, where there are some Chargers guys I could absolutely get behind it. Then I look at the Chiefs side and I said, I don't know who I want to play over here. Reeves, do you have anybody in the Chiefs that stand out for you? 
Kareem Hunt's the only guy I think you can tell yourself a, a story on, to be honest. I mean, with the Chargers, they've allowed just 109 yards from scrimmage to opposing backfield since they're by. They were allowing 175 yards per game prior. So, of course, their season-long numbers still look really poor against the running backs. They have allowed 5.1 receptions per game over that span of running backs. So maybe he can make his way in there. But, I mean, if he's he hasn't really been getting, like, a high, like, pass five. So, I mean – you could you could try to spin it that way. I mean, Tyreek. Well, the thing is with the Chiefs. So the Chiefs, when when they've been good this year, is when they're hitting on splash plays. They're just a big play offense. That's when they've been good. When they're not hitting on big plays, they're terrible. They're just a bad offense. They're not a team that really consistently sustains a lot of drives and you know gets in the red zone a lot and just puts puts these uh, you know points on the board. They they hit splash plays. Uh, Alex Smith, 41% of Alex Smith's passing yards have come on throws, 15 yards of further downfield. It's the highest rate in the league. The Chargers are the league's best team on those types of throws uh, in, in conversion rate, just 27%. Uh, Tyreek has these funky home road splits this year. He's got 44 yards per game uh, at home. It's it's a game where you just – I think if you're playing Tyreek, you're just hoping to hit one play. And that's, that's – I don't think he's going to sustain a good game against these against this, against this defense. I actually – of all the Chiefs, like you, I don't see how they sustain offense in this game. There might be a drive or two or a play they hit or two. Because I mean, even Kelsey has like a terrible track record against his defense. Uh, he's had three or fewer catches in uh, three of their past four games that they played. He's never scored a touchdown against the Chargers. Um, the Chargers have actually also been really good on tight ends here. They did give the touchdown to Vernon Davis last week, but uh, just Vern. three touchdowns on the season. Yeah, yeah, big and big Vern. You should just kept playing Cream Hunt and Big Vern every week, man. <laughs> it was gonna happen. <laughs> I got a question for Evan real fast on this game because I know we're running against it on this, but uh, is Darrell Rivas back? Oh, um, well, Darrell Rivas should be back. I mean, I know that people really have written him off, but he, like, he, he was only 31 last year. He's 32 this year. Like, we've seen a lot of cornerbacks play really well at those ages. I mean, still be shut down corners. I think that he um, – let himself get out of shape uh, last year. And I think that he actually can be an asset to the Chiefs down the stretch. Now, the Chiefs, I think, probably have to run the table uh, to – well, I don't know. The AFC is so bad. Uh, but, I, I mean, they've got to definitely win two of their last three games, I think, to get into the playoffs, you know, to finish it at nine and seven. Uh, but I think that he can end up being, like, a positive story for them. He was targeted seven times last week, allowed one catch – uh, the week before, you know, he it was like everybody said that he was terrible in that game. And I mean, I didn't really see it. He did. He was like giving a lot of cushion. It was his first game playing in, you know, a year or whatever. So or over, you know, a year and a half. So it's not surprising that he would play like a little cautiously. You know, he's he's not a great tackler, you know. So uh, but I mean, he, he he did fine last week and now we'll see him get tested. Because those dudes on the outside for the Chargers, although they're not really good in fantasy, they can run and they can make big plays. One of them's going to – we saw Rivas get beat deep. I mean, last year, maybe he's in better shape now. But one of those guys you, – you just know that this Saturday slate is going to come down to one of these guys, Travis right. Benjamin. Uh, of course, of course. It happens. Al al every although, although we thought that uh, on the Thanksgiving slate, and it really didn't, yeah. right? It really didn't. Um, but, I mean, with Revis, I just – I don't like the narrative that, oh, he's, he's old and over the hill. That's not the issue. That's not the issue. The issue is that he let himself get out of shape. And if he can get back into shape and, you know, return to playing at, at, a, at, a, at a decent level, I mean, I think he can, he can get back and be an asset to the Chiefs. But it's not that he's too old. He's not old, man. I mean, 31, 32 in cornerback years is not that old. Or in real Right. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, and you know what? Sometimes we let ourselves get out of shape. And much like Darrell Revis, once I get back in shape, uh, shape, I will be an asset to the Kansas City team as well. All right, let's talk about some quarterbacks and running backs. You know, obviously we touched on some of the bigger games of the weekend. Reeves, other quarterbacks I'm looking on, I like don't hate Kirk Cousins against the Cardinals. Tyrod, if he plays against the Dolphins, I'm not, I'm not exactly uh, sold on Xavier Howard suddenly being a shutdown quarterback. Jared Goff, if, as long as it doesn't rain, and Russ Wilson, that game could shoot out. But the one about Nick Foles, minimum price against the Giants. Come on, come aboard, buddy. Yeah, man, I'm I'm into it. I can take it on a slate like this. I don't think he's an option on DK. I think he's what 55 on DK. 
Uh, yeah, Ooh. they took away our fun over on DraftKings. Oh, I, I, yeah, I don't think he's an option at DK when I looked. I thought it was more a fan duel, man. Uh, I mean, his spot is good. I mean, it is on the road, but 30th uh, ranked defense and passing yardage per game. Probably won't have Landon Collins. Janoris Jenkins is already on the shelf. They're giving up a ton of splash plays. They've got the most touchdowns of 40 or more yards, the most receptions of 40 or more yards. Um, there's a spot here. I mean, he's not going to be Carson Wentz, but he doesn't need to be. He doesn't need to even be 2013 uh, Nick Foles to, to be good in this spot. He at, at, at min price, he just needs to get us to that 15 point, that 15 to 18 point bucket. And you know, you can trip up at quarterback. That's all we care about. So I mean, um, yeah, I mean, I'm into him a little bit. Uh, he's probably the only other like cheap guy. You brought up Russ, man. And Russ obviously is just like a set and forget dude. Like as much as you can get him, I mean, I think he's just about a quarterback. If you can play him, you just fit him in. I do want to talk a little real fast though about that Rams game. We did, we were debating whether to use that Rams game or that 49ers game. And like, so the Seahawks man are like the Steelers. Like they are just losing dudes like like a rapid clip. Yeah. They already lost Sherman. They lost Chancellor. KJ Wright is probably definitely not going to play because he's in the concussion protocol. And like this year, basically, you've missed a week if you're in the concussion protocol. Like you don't get back. Uh, and Bobby Wagner has been dealing with like a hamstring injury for like the last month, and it forced him to leave the game. The, so Bobby Wagner left the game. The next play was a touchdown. KJ Wright left the game. The next play was a touchdown the, in that Jaguars game. Uh, neither of those dudes were going to be on the field with you're talking about losing four like elite defenders. Like elite defenders, not even like dudes you start and like have like like massive like it's a it's it's a massive loss for that type of that that defense. And I mean, Todd Gurley's had a hundred yards in scrimmage uh, in all of his game, seven of his past eight games. Uh, I think that we we kind of overlook Gurley in daily fans. We'll talk about him a lot. I mean, obviously he's he's good, but like he's on like. He's been awesome, man. Like, he just crushes we, every week. What's, what else is there to yeah, say? Yeah, well, because we play Le'Veon and then we go under. You know, yeah. we don't – that's that's what's hurt Gurley. But he's like a set-and-forget dude. Like, you can play him any week you want. And if they're going to be missing all those guys in Seattle, like, it's a good spot. I just built the best team over on FanDuel, Nick Foles. Guys, if you want to have some fun, you plug in a Nick Foles and Zach Ertz team, you're going to be really happy with what it looks like at the, at the end of it. I promise you that. Evan, who are some of the other quarterbacks you're looking at this week that maybe we haven't talked about? Yeah, we named a bunch of them. I think we can go back to Deshaun Kaiser this week. Um, I think the Ravens have become very much like a pass funnel. Um, Pat Thorman of Pro Football Focus had some great stats earlier in the or uh, earlier today uh, showing how the Ravens or teams facing the Ravens have just become so much pass heavier against them. One of the reasons that we liked Deshaun Kaiser last week was because uh, he is has been good in fantasy, you know, which obviously matters. Uh, he's been a top 13 fantasy quarterback in four of his last six starts. He's super, super cheap. So if he just falls into that, like, you know, number 10 through number 13 bucket, you're, you know, you're getting a lot of equity there. Uh, he is facing the, the Ravens who uh, over their last 10 road games have allowed 25.2 points per game. Uh, that's a lot of points to allow. Uh, over their last 10 home games, they've only allowed 14.6 points per game. So they're a different team on the road or a different defense on the road. And certainly without Jimmy Smith, if you go back and look at the two games that Deshaun Kaiser was not a top 13 finisher over the last six weeks, it was against the Chargers and Jaguars, uh, both better pass defenses than what the Ravens have. Deshaun Kaiser obviously has that uh, rushing ability in his toolbox. Uh, and he also has Josh Gordon, David Njoku, and uh, Corey Coleman. Uh, and this week, uh, Josh Gordon is again the number one uh, buy low target in Josh Hermsmeyer's air, air yards model, which, by the way, hit pretty pretty nicely last week with uh, Josh Gordon and Des Bryant as the numbers one and two. And Car Corey Coleman is also very high uh, in, in that model this week. Uh, and if you just go back and look at the wideouts, even before the Ravens lost Jimmy Smith, the Ra they were getting hurt badly uh, by opposing wide receivers. Obviously, it was Antonio Brown last week, 11 for 213. DeAndre Hopkins before that, 7 for 125. Devontae Adams, 8 for 126. Marvin Jones, 4 for 90. Rashard Matthews, 4 for 70 and a touchdown. Golden Tate, 8 for 69. Uh, that's over their past five games. So that's a lot of production allowed. Coleman and uh, Josh Gordon in good spots. 
pass fun, potential pass funnel situation, rushing ability from the quarterback. Uh, he's certainly aggressive, you know, almost to a fault. Uh, you know, we saw the Steelers tight ends together just go off against this Ravens defense last week. The Steelers tight ends had 14 catches for 149. Uh, and the week before that, the, the Lions tight ends had seven for 71. That bodes well, I think, for Njoku and DeValve, who both have uh, uh, playmaking ability. I think we can go back to Kaiser. You know, his price really didn't rise a lot, I don't think, from last week. No, he's uh, 67 over on fan. Yeah, so that's up 300 or 3,000 from last week. That's not that much, or 300. So um, 3, I think he's, would be a lot. Yeah, 3,000 would be a lot. I'm sorry. Uh, but he's, I think he, make, he's, he makes sense as, some, as a tournament play. Are people are going to go back to Josh Gordon? I bet he will be significantly less owned than he was last week, I bet you. Uh, he was super popular, but he was also super cheap. Like, he's up to, yeah. what, 7,500 over on FanDuel. I don't think he's going to be too popular over there. What do you think, Reeves? And he, I, I just don't see it. People are going to play Cooks for 100 bucks less. People are going to play Larry Fitz, who we'll get to in a few seconds, for 200 bucks less. I mean, I don't think people are going to play Josh Gordon. Yeah, I think he's interesting in tournaments for a lot of reasons Evan laid out. I tweeted before we got on the show about the splash plays they've allowed since Jimmy Smith left that game just in six quarters of football. They've allowed five catches over 30 or more yards, four or 40 or more yards. They'd allowed just one wide receiver to have a catch of 40 or more yards before Jimmy Smith got hurt the entire season. Uh, so, I mean, the splash plays are there. And, and like Evan said, it's it's dudes that we count on, like Marvin Jones and Antonio Brown. But, I mean – Kaiser's a guy that's going to take his shots. I mean, it's it's not going to be a game where you get like a six for one twenty five, probably because the the targets that Kaiser and Coleman are getting are just not consistent enough. Uh, they're getting a lot of targets, but like PFF has Josh Gordon with seven of seventeen catchable targets. Like those are the types of targets you're getting from Deshaun Kaiser. You can hit some, but I mean, you're getting a lot of ones that count. Those air yards still count when they go out of bounds, but I mean, like <laughs> that's where they're going, man. Like. <laughs> One catch after that first drive last week, and they only threw 10 times the second half. They tried to sit on that league. And by the way, last week, you know, we definitely don't have time for this show. Last week was probably one of the worst jobs Hugh Jackson has done the entire season. And we could probably do a show on that. I mean, to, to just completely piss away that 14 point lead and punt the ball inside the one, and they're playing prevent defense from the one yard line uh, where their safeties. Uh, 40 yards back and the, the Packers are the ball on the one yard line like get out of here so you know what what a terribly run team like uh I don't <laughs> well, Sashi's I mean, fault it was Sashi's fault <laughs> yeah I was gonna say Evan we're almost at the end of the show so we don't have to <laughs> 20 minutes but uh your thoughts on the Browns firing the GM I mean, come on, dude. We, we'd have to do another whole other show, bro. You know? <laughs> De- Devin's probably just sitting there on the camera going. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, uh, real quick, a few running back plays I like. I think Latavius Murray this week against Cincinnati with as banged up as they are. And we were talking about that uh, that Baltimore game. Maybe Alex Collins on the other side of Danny. I, I'm going to be paying a lot of attention to see whether Danny Shelton is in or out. He's currently questionable because he misses this game. That Cleveland uh, defensive run defense is a lot worse plus I mean they just got lit up by Jamal Williams and Alex Collins better than Jamal Williams. 100 yards from scrimmage to the lead back in four straight games for the Browns uh, yeah. there yep Danny Shelton might not even how about Jay Ajayi man is this the week oh uh, I think it really could be man I think I've it could be people talking about Ajayi I, everything I like kind of sets up for it his usage has been like this mm-hmm. I mean it's, now it's really holes. trending in the right direction Giants are terrible in, in every aspect of defense. Makes a lot of sense for them to just dial up Jay Ajayi and run him into the ground at this point. Kenyon Drake, I think, is going to be the chalk, maybe on both yeah. sites. This is the week where LeGarrette Blunt just scores three touchdowns. It, and LaShawn McCoy's in a smash spot, too. Again. Absolutely. Yeah, and um, you know, when people pay up. They're paying up for Gurley. They're paying up for Bell. A lot of people don't pay up for LaShawn McCoy. So I think he is perfectly fine. Of course, he's questionable right now with the knee, but he should be playing. And again, Miami, fine. not great against uh, not great against the run. All right, real quick, wide receiver. I can't believe it's taken this long before this guy has come up. Larry Fitzgerald against the Redskins. <laughs> I assume that we're once again. You know, it's, this is going to make it 14 straight weeks other than the bye week. Evan, I assume you love Larry Fitz this week. I mean, I'm playing him in season long. I don't think I'm going to play in daily fantasy, but what? it could be like a, a, a recency bias thing, you know, just being so tilted from having a lot of them last week and seeing Gabbert just miss him, you know, over and over and over again. Uh, I mean, you know, I love Larry Fitz, but 
I don't think I'm going to play him this week. Just probably just due to my own recency bias. I really like Michael Crabtree this week. You talk about recency bias. Uh, well, right. hey, he had 13 targets last week, seven catches for 60, uh, and a two-point conversion. He wasn't bad in fantasy. I, I'm more week. upset with Derek Carr than anybody. I know, else, I but. know. But hey, if he's going to get that kind of volume, also Derek Carr came out this week and he said, "I'm going to I'm going to throw it downfield. This is what the coaches want." So he's going to come out swinging. His own so. players. How about you try that first, Derek, before you <laughs> decide to throw it? Ugh. Nope, nope. You got you guys can have Derek Carr. Boy, you talk about a guy who I just loaded up on, and I wouldn't be so tilted if I didn't put so many damn entries into that 250 on Fanduel. But oh, Derek Carr, you and I, buddy, we need to we need to have a chat. We, you were good to me last year. This year, not so much. Reeves, any wide receivers that stand out for you? I like Michael Thomas a lot. I mean, the past three wide receiver ones to face the Jets have had 108, 185, and 95 yards receiving. I feel like that game is going to be a game you can load up on. I don't know. It could be one of those games where the Saints just run the ball a lot, though. I also really like Doug Baldwin, too. I mean, uh, since the Rams week eight by, slot receivers have just been kind of doing a lot of damage to them. Sterling Shepard, Bruce Ellington, Nelson Aguilar last week at eight catches. Larry Fitz the week before that. Adam Thielen. Adam Thielen did have his touchdown on the, on the boundary. Uh, so I don't know if I should count him. But uh, slot guys have been doing a lot of damage to the Rams. They lost Kayvon Webster. Um, it's Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at uh, Doug Baldwin, too. Because I, like, I want to get some Russ exposure, and it's hard to get it just from Russ himself. I want to get some of those other guys. You know, it is funny. It's it's 11-10 right now over on the East Coast. And somehow this is the first time you anybody has brought up the Saints. So their team total is 31 points. They're right? going to smash too, man. Right. I mean, Saints D, right? We're all Saints D. Oh, yeah. I am 100%, <laughs> especially on Fandle. I, I, I just tried to find their uh, their price, but I realized they're on my lineup right now. So, yeah, 4,600 <laughs> over on Fandle. You just play the Saints D. I'm not exactly afraid of Bryce Petty over there. So, yeah, load up on the Saints D. And I'll tell you what, I think you need one of Kamara, Ingram, or Thomas, man. Like, at least one of those guys is going to smash. Do you have a preference, Evan? Uh, Michael Thomas. All right. Yeah, wow. I'm, I'm, I'm with Reeves on him. The running back. I mean, yeah, it's not like a shot at the running backs. You know, I, I really like <laughs> both of them, but I think this is an awesome, awesome spot for for Michael Thomas. All right. Well, guys, that's going to do it for us. We got to jump off here. We got to get the old D train home to the wife. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Roto World DFS Pick Six, presented by Roto Grinders for Evan Silver for Rich Rebar. I'm Eric Crane. We'll see you guys later. Peace. Cover